Hey folks, this is Jake here at Canadian Cutting Edge. Oh, and here comes Bandit. Come. Come on up. Up. Good boy. Yeah, here's Bandit. Two videos in a row. How you doing, buddy? Give me five. Right on. Yeah, you need a trim. Your hair is getting long. Have fun, buddy. Today we're taking a look at this knife. This is a newer knife by Harms. And I've reviewed Hearn's knives for quite a while, and I quite like them. Uh, the first one I did was the Blazer, which is a heavy, big, in-your-face knife. Still available. This is the seal, and it's available in black G10, or this translucent G10. And it's got AUS-8 steel. So it's a smaller knife, and it's one of the few knives I can flick open from underneath. And uh, maybe you're interested in it. Maybe, there you go. Maybe you're interested in it. Maybe you're not. It's the second knife in a row with phosphor bronze washers. That's old school from like two and a half years ago. <laughs> two years ago. Uh, you know, ball bearings were just getting started. It's amazing. Come on. It's amazing that, you know, it's only been two years and ball bearings are ubiquitous in the budget market. But there's a few knives that still have bronze and they're still smooth action. You just have to, uh, you know, hold it the right way and flip it the right way instead of talking to a camera and getting distracted and getting lost on how you're doing it. So if you're making videos, concentrate. <laughs> and if you're just watching a video, grab yourself a sandwich and a drink and take a good look at the seal. Okay, so here we go. Time to take a close look at this knife. It's not a super tiny knife, and it's far from a large knife. Here's the Ontario rat. Yeah, I know you're getting tired of it already. Uh, you know, the rat's clearly a large knife. The rat, too, is even still bigger than the seal but look at this the seal is very much the same depth as you know these larger knives so it's got the hand feel at least partly of a large knife and yet it's got the portability and uh, sort of discreetness of a smaller knife i find that quite interesting I, it works really well in my hand we've got a satin finish on the blade i'm calling it a saber grind because it comes up to about there and if there if this was solid steel the uh, line would go right across here and uh, you know there'd be a big flat area here that you could uh, you know have access to so the flat it's got stone wash we've got the satin vertical lines there for the grind very slight recurve here nice big belly on a bit of a drop point and some large jimping at the top there. And they put the name on, you know, the top of the grind up there. Model seal, and here, I haven't seen this before. AICHI steel, AUS-8. So, uh, I'll have to look up the AICHI steel part, but AUS-8 is a very common, quite popular budget steel. And oh, at the price point that this thing is, it's a very good steel indeed. A rockwell hardness on this is usually around 5758, which is totally fine for a knife that's under 30 US dollars. Yes, under 30 US dollars. We've got uh, recessed liners inside there. But of course, we have steel liners on both sides. Bit of a backspacer. There's that G10 with that jimping all the way around it. Good size lanyard hole. We've got notches for the pocket clip to be right or left. It's that wire sty style clip that sits very deep. So we got a deep carry clip. Oh, I forgot to tighten up those screws when I put it back together. Uh, so uh, actually, I'll do that in just a second. Uh, we've got a fixed pivot pin. It doesn't spin freely around. It's got that Harns logo shape on there. You know, it's a good full-size uh, handle, but not quite full length. My pinky sits 
right up on here, you know, but that still works for me. Uh, you can see the handle just barely sticking out right there. Maybe if I turn it this way, you know, just barely. Full grip, decent knife for, uh, you know, the price of what you get. $26.99 at powercutlery.com. Uh, uh, I've only got a coupon code for the Ganzo knives, so there's no coupon code for this, but that's not a bad price on Amazon. You're paying uh, just under $30, $29.89, and, you know, I'll have links for both of those. Now I'm going to put this down, and I'm going to tighten up these screws and get right back with you. Okay, so uh, I've tightened it back up again. <laughs> I had taken it loose so I could take pictures of the inside of the knife for you and everything. Uh, so I'll show you the pictures of the inside right now. Yep, there's the Foster Bronze washers. Uh, we've got a two-stop pin system. Uh, there's a stop pin for when you open it. And the second one is a stop pin that sits on this piece of steel right here when you close it. Uh, you can see it come over and uh, that engages right there. Uh, Lockup is, let's see if I can get this done right. Lockup is very close to exactly what I want a brand new knife to be. Let me get this focused here. There you go. So you can see, very good, complete, absolute lockup. No blade placed side to side, up and down. Uh, the liner lock release is a little bit tricky to get to. Uh, I'm going to take away some of this G10 here. You know, I just use a little bit of my, my Dremel tool and just take away some of that. If I keep it, uh, if the Patreon winner doesn't want this, or if they want it and they want it taken away, I'll do it. Or if I sell this and they want it taken away, I'll do it then. So I'll wait until I know for sure if somebody's interested in buying this from me or not. Um, so very, very nice. And you know, I've got that way of flicking it open. Uh, another way to open it is just put your thumb in there and pivot it open, you know, or, you know, two-handed, of course, you know, lots of different ways to open this knife. Uh, the pocket clip, I'm going to show it in pants in just a second. Uh, it sticks out of the pocket less than a quarter of an inch, about six millimeters. And I'll show you what that looks like. So goes into the pocket. The wire climbs over that, no problem. And there you go, just barely sticking out of the pocket. Very, very easy to get lost in there. And the lanyard hole is big enough for, you know, large paracord if you want to put that in there. Or, you know, you can just put in a little bit of paracord if you want. Who cares? It's your knife. You do what you want. Um, I think we're ready to uh, go ahead and take a look at all the different dimensions, uh, everything about, uh, about this guy right here, eh? Uh, well, actually, let's turn that back off. So when this thing... This is a vernier caliper. When it's no longer on the screen, that means I'm done talking about the dimensions. The weight of this knife is 98 grams, 3.45 ounces, so less than three and a half. The sharpness of the edge from the factory, it's very sharp, 100. Uh, and uh, 200 is considered sharp and everything smaller is sharper. Getting 100 or lower is quite rare, so this is a very sharp knife from the factory. Boy, my throat. My throat's just drier than ever, and it's, yeah, you might be able to hear it, but I think it's just allergies. Okay, time for the dimensions. The cutting edge, 6.8 centimeters, 2.68 inches. Blade length, so tip of the steel to the closest spot on the G10, is 7.1 centimeters, 2.8 inches. The blade thickness, 3.13 millimeters, which is 0.123 inches. That's an eighth of an inch. The blade depth, and I measure it about an inch up from the, where the edge starts. It's right about there. 3.06 centimeters, which is 1.2 inches. The thickness of the edge just behind the grind, 0.42 millimeters, which is 0 0.0165 inches. 0.5 millimeters is good. 0.42 is thinner. Uh, you know, if you're not chopping into really, really hard stuff, if you're just slicing and cutting and stuff like that, 0.42 isn't too thin. Uh, that's a really good cutting edge. And it's no wonder it slices so well and got that good score. 
uh, the grind angle on this thing. On the side that says seal, it is 16.6 .6 degrees, and on the other side, it's 19.5 degrees. So uh, that cutting edge is not only thin, it's also quite sharp of an angle. Uh, less than, well, 16.6 .6 and 19.5, normally it's 20 and 20. So that's a very, very narrow cutting edge. Um, I am going to um, polish this up a little bit, but I'm not going to sharpen it. I'm just going to leave that edge on there. I'm just going to try to clean it up and uh, make it look even sharper, maybe even actually be sharper, basically from stropping. That's what all I'm going to do to this blade at this time. No sense in sharpening it when it doesn't need it. <clears throat> uh, the handle length, 10.33 centimeters, 4.06 inches. The grip area, 8.3 centimeters. 3.28 inches, the handle thickness, not counting the pocket clip, 1.16 centimeters, that's 0.455 of an inch, so less than half of an inch thick, that's good. The handle depth is 2.87 centimeters, that's 1.13 inches, and when you close the knife, that spot's quite a bit bigger, 4.1 centimeters, 1 1.6 inches. The total length of the knife from tip to tail when it's open, 17.2 centimeters, which is 6.77 inches. So you've got a knife that is chubby, uh, not too long, not heavy, not hot in the hand, very sharp. The recurve's not so aggressive that it's going to be hard for the average guy to sharpen it. Uh, you know, they didn't put in a sharpness choil per se, but the way they ground the edge, it's just like a sharpness choil, the way they started the cutting edge here. Uh, it's a fairly strong tip because it stays thick for quite a while just before it's coming close to the point. This is a very good knife. I like it quite a lot. I should have taken that away just a little earlier. You might want to rewound about a minute or two. I, I didn't take that away soon enough. Um, the price on this, I've already mentioned, it's just under $30 on Amazon. Just $26.99 at and I recommend it. It's a knife that uh, should be totally, um, le well, it's totally legal in Canada. I totally believe that. And I think it's it will pass inspection by CBSA as well, since it's not a flipper. They're really trying to confiscate flipper knives and knives that when you shake them, the blade comes flying out. Uh, this one doesn't do either, so it's quite safe to order within Canada or to Canada. But there's no way to guarantee what CBSA will or will not do Although I wouldn't hesitate at all, which is, I didn't hesitate at all to buy this. And uh, so I got this one. I like this knife an awful lot. Uh, the wire pocket clip, tick. That's a good, those are good ticks. Slight recurve, tick. I like that. Aus 8 steel, good. Lightweight, good. Very adequate jimping both on the G10 here and on the back of the blade. Very good grip. And on the back spacer, that jimping helps very good grip on this. Uh, reverse grip is awesome as well. Um, you know, fist grip, saber grip, just e easy to hold knife. Check. The lockup, great. The fact that the pivot pin doesn't spin freely, excellent. Um, OS 8, not OS 8, uh, Torx T6 and T5, those are the two screwdrivers you need to take it apart. Uh, T6 also to move the pocket clip to the other side. Uh, solid lockup, it's all good stuff. Uh, easy to clean this knife out. The cons basically are very, very nitpicky. I would like a little more access to this flame, f f this liner lock release. I'd like a little better access to that. Um, that's about the only thing. Uh, if you like the styling of it, I would not hesitate to buy it if, if I were you. Uh, I think it's reasonably well priced it is very well built and it is very well built and you know it's just a nice nice knife if you're not into the style knife hey go get something else there's so many good knives out there don't waste your time buying something just because i like it and i review it you know there's not that's not a good enough reason for you to get it you need to want it so thanks to my patreon supporters you guys are awesome Thanks to everybody who likes, shares, comments, and subscribes. I appreciate it very much.
There we go. Flips open quite well when I'm actually paying attention. <laughs> and remember, guys, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb. Bye now.